When we set resolutions, they actually stick with us when we apply the consistent time and patience that it requires to see that little intention grow into a habit that we are now incorporating into our daily lives. And this consistency and patience is a lot of what January is about building on. I'm Mackenzie Ray. Subscribe to my channel to be notified on what's moving and shaking in our celestial and terrestrial bodies. This is the Sense and Spirit Scope for January 2021. I'm super excited to be shifting my collective monthly offerings into this format of an astrology reading and a tarot and oracle card reading from my year ahead spread. And I'm really excited about this for a couple reasons. I personally approach astrology, divination, magic, really life itself from a perspective of both sensual and spiritual enjoyment. And the combination of how our soul and our feelings and thoughts align with the stars and the cosmos, along with our body and how it's physically rooted into the earth are both equally important to me to explore. And it's important for me to explain them in terms of each other because there's only so much that we can do without one or the other because we are integrated beings. So it's my hope that this comes off in a meaningful and resonant way, not just for the way that you think, but also in the way that you feel. So January as a month, when we start it, it's a lot of rushing to goals. We have these resolutions, we have these things that we want to achieve and this January of 2021 in particular is really asking us to slow down the rush out of the gate. You know, you see those pictures of like horses or truck drivers or whatever when they come out of a gate in a race of any sort and there inevitably are some that tripping over each other because they're trying to go so fast that they're not actually putting in the intentional and practical steps. And January is asking us to be a bit slow and steady. I feel like this entire year is, especially since we're moving into a lot of fixed energy astrologically, but January in particular is asking of that because we, the sun is still in Capricorn right now. And so there are a couple planets still in Capricorn that are gonna be moving over Pluto as they move into Aquarius, kind of this slow growth away from what has been and what is going to be. And so we start off the year, the first really big thing that happens in January is that Mars moves into Taurus on January 6th. So Mars has been in Aries for about six months and this is a pretty drastic shift for Mars because Mars is going from domicile, the place where it rules, Aries, to detriment, which is Taurus, which is the opposite of its domicile, its other domicile in Scorpio. So moving from domicile to detriment, the planet of real energy and vibrant passion and a bit of aggression as well, this is a real slow down and this is a real moment to be deliberate about what you're doing. Mars as a planet wants to go, it wants to move and so it's still that same Mars energy, but it's a bit slowed down. The pace is a bit more just really deliberate because Taurus as a sign is a bit slower moving. And especially Mars, it's the place that Mars has its debt, like one of the places that Mars has its detriment. And so it really does not like this slower, more intentional energy, but it's something to be worked with. Right after that, two days later on January 8th, Mercury moves into Aquarius and Venus moves into Capricorn. So Mercury is going to be in Aquarius for a little bit longer than usual and I'll explain why in a minute. And as Mercury moves into Aquarius, we have to remember that Saturn and Jupiter just moved into Aquarius and had their great conjunction. So every planet that's moving from Capricorn into Aquarius is having this pass over Pluto in Capricorn as it shifts into Aquarius then moving over Saturn and Jupiter. 
So Mercury being in Aquarius, Mercury is the fastest moving messenger planet besides the luminary of the moon, of course, but Mercury really is shifting. Mercury is here and then it's there and then it's both sides of the coin. Mercury is more neutral. It can do a lot of different things. In Aquarius, a sign that is both fixed but also progressively forward thinking and also a sign that has to do a lot with our electrical energy in our body. This is speaking to a bit of a frantic energy. And so while we are trying to make these resolutions and do these things that are really concrete, Mercury is adding a bit of a frenzy to that. On that same day on the 8th, Venus moves into Capricorn. And Capricorn is opposing Cancer, which is Venus's exaltation. And so Capricorn is where Venus falls. An uncomfortable place for Venus. Venus wants us to feel pleasure and feel enjoyment. And moving into Capricorn, this is a more tangible pleasure. This is more of the hard work that enjoyment takes. Oftentimes we don't really get to enjoy the full breadth of how wonderful something can be until we have worked and done the due diligence to get there. And so this is a bit of the shift that's happening both on the same day on January 8th that it's giving us a more tangible feeling about what we want. And from there we move, the next big thing that happens is the new moon in Capricorn on the 13th. And on that same day, Mars is squaring Saturn, which is the two malefics, the two planets that really do the grunt work of the zodiac in a lot of ways. The planets that really move through the solar system and kind of bring the bad shit with them, one might say. Capricorn as a sign is Saturn ruled and it's where Mars has its exaltation because Mars likes to go, go, go and do all that work and Capricorn's like, let's do all this work. So all of this at the very center of the month Capricorn is a cardinal sign, but Mars is going to be in Taurus and Saturn is in Aquarius. These are fixed signs, again, fixed energy, stubborn, slow moving energy that's squaring each other. The square is a tense aspect. And so this is really at the middle of the month. This is a lot of the times where people are like, "Ooh, I made these resolutions. I have to do these things. I have to do this. I have to do it. And this is really a reminder that it's not gonna be instant gratification. This is going to be resolutions. These are goals that you really want to really make them last. And so this isn't gonna be instantaneous. And Mars squaring Saturn on the same day that a new moon occurs, where new moons, the sky is blank, the sky is empty. This is often a time that people say to manifest, to create things. We're gonna be reminded of those intentions or resolutions that we were thinking about only two weeks prior at the beginning of the year and we're going to start feeling a bit of frustration and a bit of restlessness if we're not actually doing those. So have that patience with yourself. Next on the 19th of January the sun moves into Aquarius and anything moving into Aquarius remember it will pass over Saturn and Jupiter. So this is really where we're going to have a picking up of that progressive Aquarian energy that we're all really desiring ahead of the pile up of Aquarius planets in February. When the sun moves into Aquarius, it is really going to pick up a bit of that frantic energy that we have picked up on when Mercury moved into Aquarius um, a week or two prior. And this is also a reminder that we're going to need rest. Aquarius is not a sign that really wants to rest on its laurels. Even though it's a fixed sign and it wants to have that steady climb, it's not willing to just stay still. It's a stubborn, slow moving situation, but it's still moving. And so this is definitely a a gradual building up to all of the Aquarius energy that we're gonna be seeing in February. The next day on January 20th, Mars is conjunct Uranus in Taurus. This is also the same day as the United States inauguration, supposed to be for the next president. Um, so Uranus, the planet of such unpredictability and Mars having a bit of aggression to it, this is 
a time of potential aggression when we are responding to big shocks. These can be big shocks around us and this could also be big shocks within ourselves because also in January, this is kind of a few weeks out This on the 20th. This is now three weeks out from the beginning of the year. This is when people are looking at the things that they have intended to do and they're deciding maybe that that's not what they really wanted. Maybe this is going to be a time that I'm gonna allow myself to have flexibility to change and especially since Mars and Uranus are gonna be on top of each other, this unpredictability factor, um, just be aware of that and be open to what might change around you and how you can really control your reaction to those changes. Next, one week later, um, roughly a week later on the 28th, we have a full moon in Leo. This is the same day that Venus is conjunct Pluto because Venus moved into Capricorn and so it's moving through and towards the end of the month it will hit Pluto on the same day that we have a full moon in Leo. This is a really interesting moon in Leo because Leo moons are generally a bit more time of showiness and a bit more look at me-ness in all of the beautiful ways that we all deserve to be celebrated. This being on the same day that Venus joins Pluto is interesting because I definitely feel that this could be a time of us desiring a radical shift in our appearance, especially for anyone who made a resolution that is physical uh, or appearance related. This is definitely a time that we could be wanting to see some uh, fruition from that already or also a time that we might uh, really be displeased with an appearance in one way or another and might make a drastic shift regarding that. At the very end of the month, on the 30th, Mercury moves retrograde in Aquarius, and Mercury will be retrograde in Aquarius during moving into February when we do have that pileup that I spoke of. And Mercury moving retrograde is always an interesting time. In Aquarius, an even more interesting one because Aquarius does have things to do with the body that we often aren't able to explain. Um, it's a bit trickier of a sign to work with. And so this is an important time to be aware of things that could come up in your body that you're not really sure where they're coming from and that you need to look further into those. So yeah. That is a bit of the astrology forecast and let's move into the cards. So 2021 is a five year. So I pulled five cards for each month of the year. And I'm super excited about this um, because I love numerology and I've just really been enjoying learning more about the number of the years. And so I was very excited to do my year ahead spread and to pull five cards. So starting off, the first one that I pulled for January was the Queen of Swords. So the Queen of Swords often has to do with being a court card, often, have, often has to do with an actual physical person in our life, um, along with, I believe, showing up in those archetypes in ourselves. So the Queen of Swords has a lot to do with like the wisdom behind our honesty and our integrity and the way that we communicate clearly um, our intentions. And I see this really being in the ways that we are actually clear about our intentions going into the new year and actually being very direct with ourselves and with others about what we want. The phrase around this card that kept coming to mind for me was set boundaries not just set boundaries with yourself saying, this is how much I'm willing to do, this is how much I'm actually able to do, and this is the realistic view of what I think I can do, but also setting boundaries with others and being willing to say that you're not able to do something for someone or you can't be something for someone and actually being willing to set that clear line of what you're able to do so that you are being as honest as forward as possible. The next card that I pulled was duality. So this card, I love the imagery on it. I love the Venn diagram of sorts. Um, and I love that it's a reminder that you don't have to be one or the other. 
we are integrated beings and we do have contradictions. We have ways that parts of ourselves merge with others and parts of ourselves almost seem like they don't fit together. And the phrase for this card that kept coming to me was ride the line, meaning ride the line between the physical world and the spirit world. Ride the line between peace and revolution. Ride the line between your hopes and your desires and the actual manifestation of it in reality. Being willing to be both, um, I think is going to get us a lot farther than really pigeonholing yourself into only being one thing because you're allowed to be more than one thing. You're allowed to ride the line between the two. It takes balance and it takes safety and it takes a lot of discernment, but you're able to ride the line. The next card that I pulled was the Knight of Wands. Another court card, which I found was interesting, both having both of those court cards come up since I used two tarot decks and three oracle decks, having two court cards come up for the first month of January to me said both that there are a lot of uh, mentors out there right now and a lot of, I would say, kindred spirits being willing to come together and show guidance along with a lot of leadership roles being exposed in ways that people need to step up and take that leadership role. The Knight of Wands is a lot of restless energy. It's a lot of confidence and going for what you want. The phrase for this card that kept coming to me was be bold and being willing to go there because while it's important for us to be honest about our resolutions and to be really clear about them, we also need to go for real things that are worth achieving. We can't set, um, I would say, uh, baby step resolutions. While it's important to understand that we build up to things, we don't wanna undercut ourselves by aiming for things that aren't what we're actually capable of. And it's important that we kind of ride that passion and be bold enough to go for the things that we want with the uh, with the fervor that our dreams actually deserve. The next card that I pulled was the horse, travel. Of course, I found it interesting when I pulled this card for January because um, huge global news, we just got a vaccine and people are wanting to travel again and like live life again. Um, I believe this card is not just talking about like the big trip or going someplace um, because we're, you know, restless and wanting to go somewhere. I feel that this also has to do with our daily scenery, uh, the way that we travel to and from work, the way that we travel to and from the grocery, the way that we travel to and from our friends' houses, if you're safely seeing friends right now. Um, the phrase that kept coming to me for this card was go there which is allow yourself to have the shift in your mindset to go there, to go to the place that you haven't gone before, to get to the place that you've been going in a different way than you have before, to really go there and allow yourself to be taken there. And this sort of change in scenery is really important as we progress forward, as we continue to expand the ways that we're able to interact again, kind of going, I don't want to say going back to normal because there is no normal. It's all, we're creating a new normal. And so I feel that this travel card specifically in January is talking about going there with our new normal in our new mindset and creating new travel patterns and new um, interaction patterns with our surroundings. The last card that I pulled for January was Apocalypsis. So pretty epic one, got a, not gonna lie. Um, Apocalypsis, this card has a lot to do with lifting the veil from what we thought was true and having actual truth revealed to us. From that place, we're then able to establish a new foundation. We're able to create a new truth because 
any time that information is become available to us or we realize that things are not exactly what they seemed, that requires a bit of grieving for the reality that we once knew. And it's required for us to have that grieving process of flushing out of what we thought was real in order for us to build back a stronger and more solid truth that we can actually stand on. The phrase that kept coming to me for the apocalypse card was from shadow to light. And this kind of has an asterisk next to it because I don't want it to come off as the meaning of like, oh, darkness versus brightness. I want this to be phrased and in, in the context of going from the place of a shadowed truth, of an alternative truth, of a set of facts that had a shadow on it that was not had didn't have everything fully exposed to us. We didn't fully understand the big picture. To a place of light, meaning that light is being shined on all of the facts, all of the information is being given to us, and so we are able to have this more illuminated sense of truth that we're moving forward with. And taking that as we step forward and as we really move because you can't have any sense of established truth or knowingness until you've had to go through the shedding process of all of the thoughts and misconceptions of truth that weren't actually real. So yeah, January feels a lot like tangible steps, slow moving steps, but tangible steps towards what we want. Um, while also keeping in mind that we deserve to have a bit of restless passion about what we still want. Uh, yeah. So thank you so much for watching. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. I would love to hear your thoughts and I will see y'all in the next one.